All right, two o'clock and we are live. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, welcome to the webinar. So, guys, first things first, we want to make sure that uh, you guys hear us. So, uh, if you can hear, type in the chat box on your uh, right side, uh, thumbs up or anything else that indicates that you guys uh, can hear us. Up. All right. Can you hear us from the back as well, if the three of us are talking? Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. All right. So okay. welcome, guys, to our uh, student life, student experience webinar. And uh, all of us are student ambassadors. My name is Andreas, and I'm a second year international business and management student. Also, my colleague, Xenia. She's also doing international business management, but she is in her third year. So later on, she's going to give you guys more, more um, information about her internship because it was quite interesting, right? Yeah, it was great. Um, Shirin, second year international business and management student. Uh, Victoria and Iris, they are doing international business for Asia. So, guys, we are really curious. Right now, we do have uh, 27 attendees. So, can you tell us where you're from? Because we're really curious. Mm -hmm. This is always the most exciting part. Yeah. Where'd you go? Romania. Romania! Romania. Oh. Oh. Russia, привет. Russia. Hello, Russia. Lithuanians, yeah. All right. Is anybody from Seychelles? Because uh, I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Indonesia. Wow. That is so cool. Yeah. So international. So international. Okay. Super nice. All right. Uh, so let's get into it, right? Uh, so today's agenda you probably saw in the newsletter. Uh, we're going to cover these topics such as uh, struggles in the beginning, how to make friends, of course, common questions, right? Uh, internships. Uh, so Xenia is going to take over, and of course. Uh, traveling within Netherlands and Europe, since Netherlands is basically the heart of uh, Europe. All right, so first days in Rotterdam, struggles and how to manage. So, Victoria, could you, uh, could you tell us your experience here? Sure thing. So, as you guys may have seen on the front page, I am French by nationality, but I did move here from Thailand. So, for me, that was a very big move back to Europe after being out for 14 years. So I definitely experienced quite a lot of, uh, let's say, struggles moving here. For those of you who come from, let's say, a lot of Asia, and I think even Iris can relate to this yeah. problem, Netherlands really likes to use credit cards here or debit cards. So it's not a cash system. Where I grew up, you really just deal in cash. And here, everything is by card. Even buying a water bottle, you pay by card. Um, so that was one of my biggest struggles here is really um, familiarize, familiarizing myself with that. Um, also, what came with that, I think, for me, is the transportation. So some of you may know that the RET system, the transportation system here, is really just a 10 out of 10, except maybe in winter. Um, <laughs> I think everyone <laughs> just got that. Um, but yeah, the RET system here is very good. While it's quite expensive, you can really get anywhere in Netherlands or Rotterdam itself um, through the transportation system. So I think for me, that was uh, one of my struggles well, my two biggest struggles here. As well, I think maybe the weather. Some of you who may come from hotter countries, like yeah. I think Sharon as well can relate to this. <laughs> from tropical Seychelles. countries. Uh, from yeah. tropical countries, I think the weather is a big thing to get used to here. Definitely. In the recent days, I think some of us may have nearly been blown over by the wind. <laughs> um, so those are a few of my struggles. But I think Iris also yeah. has some coming from Romania. Well, yeah, same as you, Victoria. Uh, coming from a cash country, same. Um, <laughs> No cash, only card. Um, as well as uh, my, one of my biggest struggles was uh, how do I get to Rotterdam from Amsterdam? And oh, this yeah. is why we got you covered. We have a pickup service that um, works very, very well. Um, we pick you from the airport. Uh, we drop you off at uh, in Rotterdam or at your uh, dormitory. Um, and uh, that's why, as the student ambassadors, we uh, made a student handbook. So uh, the second you get here in Rotterdam, uh, you're going to be given this handbook and it has all the tips and tricks that you need 
uh, to know uh, and if you're struggling. Um, yeah, That's some of which my, uh, we'll discuss in this presentation yeah. as well. So you'll get a glimpse of the student handbook, let's say. For me, I don't know how about you guys personally, but uh, the very beginning, the first week uh, of uh, university, it was quite interesting. I mean, coming from Eastern Europe here to Western, of course, the educational level is different and the knowledge is up to date and, uh, yeah, and practical knowledge. And of course, every university has their own uh, system how to exchange information. And for me, it was quite challenging, uh, I mean, to get used to use uh, Hint, our official uh, <laughs> yeah, system. I mean, yes. over there, you get, you get to know your schedule. Of course, you can access your email address and, uh, yeah, a not notification board where you see all the information. But, I mean, honestly, you're forced to, I mean, to get used, get used to it, right? But eventually, you do because, you yeah. know, of course, the first few weeks, it's, it's a bit of a struggle, but... Yeah, in the end, you you just know your way around, and it becomes like yeah. pretty. I mean, yeah. Second. In other words, it's the holy platform of this university, where yeah. everything you want to get done gets done through there. So mm -hmm. that's yeah. one of our biggest tips: is probably get to know it as soon as possible. Totally agree. Yeah. And of course, exploring the city. But uh, the best part is that I really appreciate that the university is organizing the uh, the city tours, and I remember the. the assistants and also student ambassadors they showed us the most popular places here in Rotterdam which I find quite fascinating and which so we're gonna tell you guys as well oh yeah, yeah. that's true that's true <laughs> later on and guys I forgot to mention as you saw in the newsletter uh, the best part is that you can ask us questions so you can already type the questions in the right box and uh, later on at the end of the webinar we're going to cover them all right yeah, and as already mentioned, there's a couple of things that, you know, a lot of us students, when we come to Europe or even, you know, to a new country, we're kind of, you know, worried about it and especially making friends because um, you come here alone. And I think all of us actually came here alone, yeah. so yeah. making friends is part of the, the concern. And I can tell you that it's, it's not difficult. Everybody is in search of, you know, meeting new people from different cultures and learning and the knowledge you actually get from it is amazing. Um, and what we help with as essays and also the Center of International Affairs is having a couple of parties at the beginning of the year. Um, yeah. <laughs> and they're super fun. I mean, um, we've, but we've been doing for a couple of years now the boat party and we've got a few more <laughs> yes. ties than the others, but yeah. And uh, it's pretty cool. You're um, over uh, on the Mass River um, in the center of Rotterdam and um, we have some other activities also for students coming in uh, February. Mm -hmm. So we always make sure that you get an opportunity to, to meet each other. At actually, least before class. actually, the Netherlands uh, mm -hmm. is quite famous for their boat parties. Yeah. And uh, especially yeah. for this one, because the university is getting like a huge boat with two floors, the first floor with uh, the bar yeah. and the dance floor and the DJ. Second uh, floor is uh, an open terrace, so yeah. Yeah, and dancing on a boat, that's pretty amazing. So that's a pretty cool <laughs> yeah. introduction. Even this yeah. picture actually was just a, taken of me and Iris last September. So yeah, and they're all you, they're all first year students. Yeah, you can see we got lucky with the weather this time because I mean the wind wasn't our best friend that night, but uh it was a really, really fun night. I think we were all there actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was, I mean August, you know, summertime. Yeah, warm. Yeah, it doesn't really look like summer, but <laughs> <laughs> it was at night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and with us as well, that's the thing, we're there to um, introduce you, but we're also there to be your friends. So, I mean, look at the picture, we're all participating in it and meeting new people, so. Yeah, first year yeah, students so as well, right? Yeah, yeah. we are students as well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for me, what helped me find friends is a Facebook group. I found my first friend when a girl just posted, hey, do you want to meet? We're going to the beach, to the hug, and I was like, okay, whatever, let's meet. And it was my first friend here, and then people just make groups, boys play football, yeah. girls go together somewhere. When you go to parties, you're like, yeah, at home play, it's which place to be like gather before. So that's how you make friends, because they're all people, like most of the people come alone. And they're like, yeah. That actually comes yeah. naturally, people creating WhatsApp groups. Yeah. And then yeah. suddenly you have like a whole group of people that you can just say, okay, guys, I'm going to this place. And yeah, you already have a group there. So 
the dormitories yeah. also. Yeah, yeah they I are. I think Andreas can share that one. <laughs> yes. you know Our last is. point, go <laughs> out. <laughs> we had oh, a lot God. of fun stories. Actually, we... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> us, three, us three, we've been living in the dorms all together. Yeah. So, uh, dorm stories. <laughs> I mean, we have a dedicated slide for it, for going out. <laughs> so later on, we're going to cover it, right? Yeah, now about studying because our uh, <laughs> first year. What year? Yeah, so we get more serious. Uh, you come here to study, and uh, many, uh, many people ask us where can they study because some people can study at home. You feel nice on your couch, maybe on your desk, but some people cannot concentrate because you have all these thoughts like, should I do laundry now? What should I eat? <laughs> so uh, that's for me. Uh, so that's why we here's like a small list of uh, places where you can go. So you can go to libraries. We have library here on the campus. There is a library in the city center. Then there are cafes all around the city, and they're great. Uh, they have this study atmosphere, like uh, tables, people with laptops, coffee, and it's like it's kind of inspiring for you to do something. And I have like several places near my place, near my home, maybe like two minutes away. So for me, it's very easy to go. You can also study on campus when you have, for example, meetings with groups. You can uh, book a room. So you book like a project room and you study with your whole team. I think it's great because it's like different environments. You can choose what you like. I don't know, Andres, what is your favorite place to study in Rotterdam? Uh, in, uh, in Rotterdam? Probably the Erasmus Library. I mean, yes, uh, on the picture on great. the slide. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. huge. And uh, there's also some uh, dedicated areas where everybody needs to be silent, you know, because like, otherwise mm -hmm. you're, you're going to get kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> other, <laughs> other places, they are more like chill, you can have a conversation, etc., etc. So it is nice. It is really nice. And the best thing actually closes at midnight, so you can stay oh, there yeah. the whole time. That's true. Yeah. Some late night and day. people stay till night. You can see people <laughs> leaving last minute. So. You don't even <laughs> want to leave, you know. I mean, downstairs you have the food plaza. You can have something to eat. You have something to drink. You just your lunch, yeah. your dinner. You yeah. set up shop basically yeah. the entire day. I think all of us did have done yeah. it at least yeah. once. Yeah. 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 During yeah. exam weeks, we, we live there. Feel that. Yeah. <laughs> And actually, you need to show up early because... Uh, to get a spot. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're uh, going together in the afternoon, there's probably no chance, yeah, <laughs> no chance. For sure. All right, so let's talk about uh, sports because uh, many people are also keen uh, in terms of sports. And we do have an amazing uh, sports center in our campus here at Kralnik Sezom. It is called Erasmus Sports Center. So the best part is that... Uh, it is also uh, a key for you guys who are going to show up here early, like in uh, August, September, because they are going to give you a discount. Mm -hmm. Imagine that for 170 euros, you're going to get a membership for one year. And the, in this membership uh, is included access, of course, to the gym and access to other 50 or I can remember 50 or 60 activities, including uh, Zumba, meditation, yoga, jiu-jitsu, kickbox, uh, basketball, volleyball, etc., etc. I mean, you name it. Yeah, myself, uh, I love playing table tennis as well as squash. So I didn't it is. Know that. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know that. Yeah, it is. Fact. It is yeah. the second year that I have uh, that I bought the the membership. You know, but uh, I mean, other than that, if uh, your location is not really nearby. Of course, you can consider other gyms because uh, we do have quite many in yeah. Rotterdam. Yeah, yeah but uh, this is one of the yeah best gyms. I mean, in my personal opinion, uh, I think so many students are going to agree with me yeah, as well. So you might consider that. If not, if you're uh, casual, casually, you know, doing sports, so Kranix the boss is perfect for a run. I mean, if well, if we do have some good weather. I mean, Dutch people, they don't mind the, the bad, bad weather as well. So, yeah. So, it's up to, uh, uh, up, up to a person and uh, it depends on your, you know, on the, motivation. your motivation yeah. and mindset. Yeah. If you are, you know, if you like challenges, go ahead. <laughs> Just meet this guru. Yeah, let's meet this guru over here. All right, where should you do your grocery shopping? Now, this was something that was quite big for me. I don't know about the rest of Maybe for you it was cheaper in Seychelles? Um, or? 
Not not really actually because of the currency difference actually. It depends, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So speaking for myself, when I lived in Thailand, I would eat out pretty much every single night, and that was sort of my lifestyle because things are so cheap over there. When I came here, I learned that wasn't quite possible unless you wanted to pay about 14 euros for Uber Eats. Um, so for us, we this is also part of the handbook. We created sort of a most expensive to most affordable, in other words, student orientated grocery shopping. Um, so for those of you who come from abroad or anyone who's really um, into, let's say, Asian food, uh, you do have the oriental stores here. Of course, they tend to be a bit more expensive because they're all imported foods. Um, I think Iris and I living together, we go yeah. there quite often as well. Um, and then you have, let's say, the Albert Heijn Spar uh, Jumbo, not Jumbo, I always, I still say it wrong. That's true. I still say it wrong. <laughs> and you have, I call it Coop, I heard it's Co-op. Yeah. So oh, I'm yeah. wrong with that one as well. But that's more, let's say, the high end. So if you're a student who has the higher end of a, an allowance from your parents, I suppose that's where you end up doing your shopping. Um, I think I speak for everybody in this room when we are more people who will go to the lower end. So as you can see in the picture on the right side, you've got the Market Hall, which is a famous, uh, let's say, indoor market in, in Rotterdam. Um, it's really cool. I do suggest you guys go there. But where we'd like to shop is right in front of it. So the regular market. So it's uh, on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Uh, you're able to go there like from early morning to afternoon. And you really buy everything you want there, like very just dirt cheap. Um, so we often go there. I, we go there once a week or so um, to buy all our vegetables and fruits for the week and things like that. And then you have the really, I think they're all, there are two of them are German, right? Aldi and Lidl, them correct? Yeah, are German, yeah. So there are German supermarkets and we have one Dutch one where we go and it's obviously a lot more, it's a lot cheaper than um, the higher end. So that's one tip from us, I think, is just be careful where you do your grocery shopping because the bills do add up very, very quickly, let's just say that. Yeah, when you check your location of your dormitory or your apartment that you rent, just check supermarket at the nearby and use our small scale to see where you can shop. Yeah, because you're not going to have time every every day of the week to do the shopping, so you have to plan it a little bit on, on what you really need and where you can get it. And easy access, of course, is, is the best part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, hotspots. Um, <laughs> yeah, student life is more about yeah studying, but also uh, going out with people and uh, going out with friends. And that's why we compiled a list of our favorite spots in uh, in Rotterdam. Uh, it's crazy that boss, as uh, Andrews here mentioned, uh, it's a super super big park here in uh, Rotterdam, and uh, we normally have barbecues there organized by the university. Mm -hmm. Um, same as Market Hall, Victoria mentioned as well, um, good for shopping. Uh, Vessel 11, you have it in the picture there, it's a, uh, it's a boat that uh, was transformed in a bar and a restaurant. It's a really nice place to hang out and maybe it's yeah, super it's, nice. it's best yeah. nachos super cool. in the whole world. Yeah, that's true, that's true. <laughs> Always recommend. Uh, and Vita de Wittstrad, which is, uh, let's say, the student hub of uh, Rotterdam, loads of uh, bars and restaurants, but also uh, Museum, so that you know we get culture a little bit. Uh, <laughs> so, um, it's museums and art galleries. It's uh, it's a really really nice street. Um, and most of those uh, hotspots you're gonna see uh, because uh, we're gonna take you on a student um, city tour uh, when you arrive here in Rotterdam. So don't worry, you'll get the, to know those places uh, very well when you come here. And I continue Ooh. on with the fun part. <laughs> so a little bit actually when you mentioned Vita de Wittstadt, I was thinking that's the place I would go because that's where you know I like the bars and there's a little bit of dancing. Not too clubby, but just you can you know hold your drink and dance at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a couple of other ones that I haven't been to all of them. I don't know about you guys. Um, Not any all of them. Favorites no. uh, among the these bar these clubs. Actually, actually I like uh, the Masilo one because uh, I like the history behind it. Actually, oh, yeah. before that, it was a huge factory. Then suddenly it got abandoned, and the one guy came up with an idea to make it a club. And right now, I mean, uh, the club, they can uh, accommodate like thousands of thousands of people. And uh, it is made out of like four floors. So at every floor, you have different type of music, like house music. Yeah, techno music, trance music, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
Yeah, and uh, actually attending one of the events over there, you feel like uh, you are at a mini festival yeah. because there's so many people inside. Imagine like factory, yeah, yeah. and it's like thousands of thousands of people. So Pretty that's cool. one of different kind of clubs. Yeah. I think a popular one as well as VIP room because they have what they call ESN Tuesday. So that's the Erasmus night basically for it's I think it's student night. Yeah. It's basically student night at VIP room every Tuesday. So mm -hmm. that tends to be quite populated. Villitalia is more maybe on the upper end. I think drinks there are more expensive. It's kind of it's a very big club mimics a little bit like I guess American clubs. It's kind of like that mm -hmm. vibe. Um, and then I think one that's, well, Annabelle and Beer Garden are actually right next to each other. Um, oh, yeah, we went to Annabelle too. Yeah, and yeah. we went to yeah. Annabelle, yeah. yeah. It was so, after both party, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's one that's quite populated at the start of the year. I think students tend to go there. They also have quite good events. Yeah. And Toffler is for those who are really into techno, I think. We've been there once, yeah. 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 But what I like, the parties that they organize for like cultures, there's like this Eastern European party that I like going, where they have like, Russian <laughs> and Bulgarian music. I mean, if you miss home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you miss the music from home, and also there are Asian parties, so if you really like specific type of music, you can go specifically to that party. Yeah. And the best thing is to just follow them on Facebook, and then you yeah. really know what, what they have mm. planned every weekend. That's why it's yes. nice. And next up is about transportation. Um, I already covered, and Victoria covered a little bit about the red system. Um, so here we have trams, buses, and metro, and also water taxi that you can uh, get to school to. So, well, depending on which location you're at, um, water taxi is probably not the best one <laughs> in this time where it's pretty windy, but trams and, and metro run almost 24 seven. So. Um, what you first need to do is get an Obey chip card, which is something we give you tips about how to get that. Um, it's sort of like um, a, a system where you just beep in uh, when you enter the tram and then you beep out and it calculates the distance that you've traveled and this is the amount of money that they're taking. Mm -hmm. So, And it's better to do that than buy a ticket every time you get on, on a metro or a tram. That gets super expensive. It does. Yeah. It does. And if you really want to go cheap though, <laughs> avoid like paying metros and trams. We have also bicycles. I mean, if you guys have done your homework, um, the Netherlands is very, very popular for bicycles. Mm -hmm. And I think we all own one in this room. Yeah. 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 Of course. It was probably my first muscles. purchase, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what prices, Andreas, uh, what, what price range did you have to... Uh, uh, for yeah, if, if you're on a budget, you can get easily for like 30 euros a bike secondhand. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you like uh, more comfort, if you will, yeah, you can buy uh, from an actual shop. From it starts from eighty euros, I think. So yeah. I think if for that you're just putting yourself more at risk for people who like to steal your bicycle here. So example, when we, yes, right here, <laughs> we got told when we arrived that in our first year we get our bikes stolen maybe three, four times. That was what our previous student ambassador told us. Um, and when I finished my first year, I was super proud that I lasted a year with my bicycle. <laughs> And the day after I made a joke to one of our first year students who arrived in September about his bike being stolen, mine got stolen the next night. So I call that karma, but that is something I think the best thing to invest in more than the bicycle is luck that you're going to have luck uh, in the bicycle. Yeah. Very big fat one. <laughs> <laughs> and also change it up because I think Senya you um, painted a little bit your, your bicycle and added a couple of stuff. Yeah, so my bicycle is very, very pink. That's my <laughs> natural protection. No one will ever steal it and have a, like a flower <laughs> in the basket. I would. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I I left it without a lock. But it's good to have a lock, and also I changed my lock six times because it got broken. Like I broke it myself <laughs> with a key. So I would invest into something more like high quality because I bought mine for like three euros. Maybe not the bad decision, but yeah, lock is something you need to invest. Oh, pink bike, it's like you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's also another cool system called uh, Swap Feet, which is yes. um, oh, I have that now. You can maybe better speak yeah? about yeah. that. So swap feeds, no. I, yeah, I decided to invest in swap feeds after my unfortunate event. Um, and it's a really cool concept. You actually pay, I think, for about 12 euros a month. You basically rent what they call a swap feeds. And these, I don't want to jinx myself, these technically never get stolen because people can actually resell the parts because they're all identical. So they come in different colors. You don't actually get to choose your color. Um, so I have a bright red and blue one now. So I do look like a five-year-old child when I'm cycling. But um there, it's a really cool concept because you rent it and you pay per month and if you don't actually want to keep your bike, let's say in the cold winter months, 
you do give them one month notice and you give your bicycle back during winter where you want to use, let's say, the metro system. Um, and then back around this time, you request your bike again and you start paying 12 euros a month. So it's a different system because what, what you have with that is um, sort of like an insurance in the sense that if you ever, if you're, uh, you get a flat tire or your bike start, stops working or anything like that, um, they actually come and fix it for you within 24 hours. So you do have that added security um, that if something happens to your bicycle, it gets fixed faster, let's say. Yeah. All right, nice. Uh, the next slide is all about uh, traveling within uh, the Netherlands and Europe. As I mentioned before, Netherlands, if you will, it is the heart of Europe. So basically, you can reach any place uh, in the in the Europe. Yeah, w whenever you want. Of course, uh, it depends on time and and budget. But uh, in terms of the Netherlands, uh, what I like the most is that uh, living in Rotterdam, you can. Uh, reach Amsterdam within like two minutes, the entrance city direct. Using, yeah, using the train, you can reach uh, Amsterdam like in no time, in 30 minutes. To reach the Amsterdam airport, it takes you like 23 minutes. Yeah. So it is amazing and uh, probably we all appreciate it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Delft is more like a cozy, cozy town. Over there you can, uh, yeah, have a, have a walk or, you know, like, uh, get some uh, nice cultural experience. It's a, like a typical Dutch town. Yeah. Utrecht is more like a like student city. Uh, Den Haag and Scheveningen, of course, uh, the best time uh, to go. Uh, there is, of course, summer time where you, uh, when you can enjoy the beach. But you need to say it with a Dutch accent. Scheveningen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, of course, traveling by, by plane, you guys went to Portugal, right? Oh, yes. Uh, can you mention though, what was the, the the price of the tickets? Gosh, we paid sixty euros return. Yeah. yeah. Imagine that 60, 60 euros for a round trip. I myself, I bought also a tickets like a few days ago uh, to Spain to Mallorca for eighty euros for a tri round wow. trip. Nice trip. Yeah. Yes. The, the same goes with uh, international projects like. Uh, uh, People like myself, I went to Miami also for 230 euros. Mm -hmm. It is really cheap if you consider going from Amsterdam or Brussels. Mm -hmm. So you should guys consider that. Also traveling by train, you can reach Paris, Brussels and London within like three or four hours, mm -hmm. which is amazing. About internship, I am here the only third year, so I can talk about that a bit. It's the best part, I think, of the program. It's a mandatory internship for half a year. You have to actually work in a real company. This is where all your knowledge, uh, you can come, like you can put it into practice. And you can do it anywhere. People went to Australia, they went to US, to Bali. I stayed here in the Netherlands uh, because I did it at Unilever. Uh, it's a very famous company, owning 400 brands. It's huge, it's very cool. So um, I did marketing, I did brand development for a brand, the SIF, the cleaning one. I don't know, maybe girls know, because I love that brand. And when I came, I was like, whoa, okay, I, I like, I, I want to work for that. And uh, I did it for half a year, I learned a lot, and it was, it's great for my CV, it's great for my connections. Now I already have people who are like, yeah, they want to come for a thesis here. So it's a, it's a mandatory part, you do it depends on the program on the third or fourth year. But it's really, really beneficial. It's something that makes our university, University of Applied Science, stand out. Because everyone goes on internship, it's mandatory, and you have to go, but then you end up in a great place. I only heard positive uh, reviews about internships. People did different jobs in different places, different companies, startups, big companies like Unilever. They loved it. I loved mine. I seriously, I, I enjoyed it so much. It was the best, like, half a year that I spent, like, knowing new people, learning new things, actually working in a real company on real pro projects, like the products I developed going to be launched in at the end of April, so I, like, I can't wait. So yeah, this was my experience. University helps with finding the internship, like we have fairs, we have different kind of vacancies that you can see on the website of there, like on the internal website of the university. We have workshops, how to improve your CV, you know, LinkedIn account, everything. So you come, you can, you come like prepared, and then you go, you find the best internships, and you have the best half a year of your life.
which is what we're going through now. Yeah. Yes. Us, in search of our internships, and we're super excited, especially from the stories that Senya tell us about. So, yeah. when are you yeah. starting, you guys? September. Oh, we start yeah. in April as well. Yeah. April. Yeah. <laughs> Next month, and actually, it's exactly a month. Fifteenth of April, we start. Oh, cool. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, we have uh, several social media accounts, so whatever you prefer. We have Facebook and Instagram, so if you have any kind of questions, you can also email us. We hope we covered the most important topics, but if you still have some questions, maybe some concerns, follow us on Instagram because we post cool things. And on Facebook, <laughs> we also post cool things. You can get to know people, some events in Rotterdam. And uh, we are very active there, so if you are also active on Instagram or Facebook, go there. That's our, we, we uh, manage the accounts so you can see the actual student life, our stories, our posts, so yeah. Every day there is new content, right? The yeah. live streams, uh, stories from all the events that are organized by uh, RBS, yeah, it, it is amazing, it is amazing. All right, so what is my next step? If we've uh, successfully convinced you to apply to the university, and we'll get to your questions in just a bit, um, these are the kind of steps that you have to take next. So if you are registered on StudyLink, you can already, let's say, skip uh, step one. If you aren't, then StudyLink is where you need to uh, apply to any Dutch university, let's say, and then you'll start your, let's say, application process. So you have to send your certified documents. For the majority of you, you'll need to take, um, let's say, English exams, so IELTS or TOEFL exams. Um, there are also cases that are exempt. And you can contact our admissions team. They will also be having a webinar soon um, on the admission process. Um, what's going to follow is a Skype interview. So that's a study choice check. Um, and that's just to see whether we feel you match the program. So it's a two-way conversation um, between one of our officers here um, and sometimes a, pro a program coordinator where they're going to ask you things like why you're choosing university, what are your motivations for coming to Rotterdam uh, what do you see yourself doing in the future? Um, so it's just a really nice, let's say, 10-minute conversation where you can also just ask any questions or concerns that you have um, about coming here. And once you get a, a positive evaluation for that, you're going to go to, let's say, receive your conditional admissions uh, package. Um, and from then on, well, it's just up to you to pass your exams um, in order to make it here. So any more specific questions about Koya student admissions, we're going to get to on the next slide um, because the upcoming webinars are the ones that you can see on the screen here. So we're going to have it by pretty much every department in the Center of International Affairs. So we're going to have one by our admissions officers, our support team. Um, for those of you in this webinar who are non-EU, of course, you're concerned about your visas. Um, there's also going to be a webinar to discuss on how the visa process goes. Um, and then we're going to have program related ones. So for those of you who are still unsure between two programs, maybe it's IBA and IBM, um, you will have program-related webinars. There are already some up on our YouTube. If you'd like to check out, let's say, our last year's one, I think we've all been in one, I think. Mm -hmm. um, then you're going to have the housing Q&A. So we've got a lot of things upcoming for you guys. Um, yeah, that, comes, that brings it to an end. Yes, exactly. And uh, before co covering the, the questions, uh, we would like to yeah, give you guys a small survey with only four poll questions. So it, it means that it is going to take only like one minute of your valuable time. And uh, filling in the four poll questions, I mean, it means the world to us because uh, we need some feedback, you know, does it like, is that webinar bringing some value? Should we need, sh should we improve it, et cetera, et cetera. So right now we're going to get the form, and in a few questions, uh, we're going to cover Yay, your so positive reviews. <laughs> we're doing well, guys. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we can move on with questions. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave that open. You guys can answer, and we'll just start answering your your many many questions. Yes. Let's start from wow. the top. Yeah. Scroll up. down. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the first one. Yeah. All right. We have to lean forward. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Andres, you can start with the first few, and then let's see how it goes. We had Oliver saying something. Uh huh. If everything is online, do you need your own personal laptop? Oliver, um, I'd say with that, honestly, the campus that you're going to be on 
has computer rooms where you can access your, uh, you're going to have a, with your hint your own username and password so you can access all sorts of programs. I used to take my laptop a lot and now I just don't feel like carrying it anymore so I generally use the computers in the study rooms. A laptop really is just for your own personal use when you're here. For example, if you're like Senya and you want to go to a library, you obviously bring your own computer with you there, but I wouldn't say it's a huge necessity in terms of completing your work from from uni, let's it, say. it depends on how you study, of course, if you're more, you know, studying over your laptop or, yeah. you know, you write down your notes. Um, that's a, a personal preference. Um, but in, in terms of uh, submitting documents, um, uh, exams or something, then it's online, uh, but then you have computers at school for that. So if you do not own a personal one, then you don't really have to worry that much about it. Yeah, but I've just seen the next question. We've got to go through these. There's a lot of questions, mm -hmm. so we'll go through them a little faster. A fellow, ooh, Victoria, fellow <laughs> Victoria, is there any option to study Dutch during the first year as well? Actually, good thing you asked, because for non-Dutch speakers, so those who do not hold a Dutch passport, it is mandatory to study it in your first year. Um, it comes in two ways. You can either study it as the language in your program that goes for um, IBM and IBL specifically. And if you choose not to study it within your program, such as us for IBA, which we can't, um, you study it as an elective. That will take about three of your elective, um, let's say, choices. So generally that takes up your first year, or we started halfway through first year yeah. until halfway through second year. Um, and you will have to study Dutch by Dutch law. So the government believes that in order to really settle yourself in and indulge yourself in the Dutch culture, you've got to learn a bit of the language. And of course, that helps if you want to start finding a job here um, as well. Yeah, I learned Dutch for two years in my first two years of IBM. And we got about B1.1, so a bit higher than B1. So now I can like hold the conversation. So if you really want to learn Dutch, yes, you can choose it as a second language, but it depends on the program. I see here a few questions. Uh, one person is asking us, uh, are some of us uh, master's students? No. no, we are all bachelor students. And another question is about uh, supply chain management. Unfortunately, we're all uh, either international business and management students Bachelor. or, yeah, bachelors, or, or uh, international business for Asia. I think for that, what you can do, though, is we showed it a few slides before the Koya student ambassador email. If you do just pop us an email there, mention your name, uh, we can get you in contact with a student in, the, in that master's. So you can have a conversation with them if that helps you. All right, next question. How busy is a student life in Rotterdam? Oh, Victoria. Tough question. <laughs> Me? <Sorry. laughs> oh, another Victoria. Victoria. <laughs> oh, I'm getting confused now. <laughs> Yeah, how, how busy is your life? <laughs> well, I think it depends if you take, let's say, a job or you don't. I mean, I think all, well, all of us here obviously work. Yeah, um, yeah work is I think in, in our first year, I, I didn't take off a job as well until no, I got here. So say it's rather recommended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's very doable to have a job and uh, work alongside your, your studies here. It very much depends from person to person. I mean, it depends if you're someone who's a party animal and who's going to spend more time on that or you're more focused on your studies, of course, which is what we all want you to be. Um, so it really depends on what you actually get to do. Um, there are a lot of things. Rotterdam itself in a city is a very student orientated city. So the majority of the population here is a very young population. So I don't think there's ever a day where something isn't going on here, whether it's a theater event or the International Film Festival also occurs here. Um, you have, let's say, events in nightclubs. You've got the open air cinema as well in August yeah. is another also, one. I uh, mentioned Risa. Because Risa, Risa yeah, yes, definitely. that's the one. Our student yeah. association. They're making, uh, uh, they're they're making, uh, they're organizing parties and, uh, as I mentioned before, the the barbecue in uh, in the park as well. So uh, you can you can balance it out. Uh, you can have job, you can go to school, and also have social life. So it's manageable. Yeah, everything is under control. It is busy, but yeah. uh, it it's is not all about busy. Yeah. It's yeah. good yeah. busy. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. nice busy. I think there's one specific question here. I see. What's the minimum bachelor degree grade required for master's marketing management programs? I think for that question, we don't want to give you the wrong answer. So what I advise is, uh, Andres, if you can type in the chat box, you're going to see it at the bottom of the thing uh, of the chat. Just message uh, Koya Admissions, and they can better tell you about 
um, the requirements for entering uh, a master's program. Yeah, at HR.nl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone want to take the next question? There's one from Victoria again. Ooh, Victoria, um, popular <laughs> today. Mm -hmm. Are students actually available to work while studying, and what is the best option for it? Oh, well, we, we just touched upon that. that. Yeah, yeah, we covered upon that. But Sports. if you want more information, you can definitely email us as well, and yeah. we can um, tell you more. Uh -huh. Oh, this nice. is yours. What are yeah. the best sports yeah. options? Yeah. Well, not the sports <laughs> options. Oliver. Yeah, Oliver. So as uh, I mentioned before, the best option probably uh, would be to get a membership at Erasmus Sports Center. As I mentioned before, you pay with a discount if you're going to get the membership uh, around September, October, for 170 euros. And uh, the, for those 170 euros, you're going to get uh, access to the gym and to other 50 or 60 activities. If you're a sports guy, if you like, um, yeah, material arts like uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu kickboxing, for girls, uh, Zumba, all those power hey, pumps. Hey, we can also do martial arts. <laughs> yeah, power that? pumps. I I yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think there's also a question coming up specifically about do they have a football team. While the university itself doesn't have uh, sports teams, you do get to have them through the Erasmus Sports as well. So you can try out for them. I think they have everything from a basketball team, a football team. Yeah, uh, I think they even have a tennis squad. Yeah, um, yeah. They even have a gymnastics. I yeah. saw them Yeah, yeah I saw them yeah, flipping around. Volleyball. <laughs> yeah, volleyball is also a popular <laughs> one. Um, so, <laughs> so that is possible to do, yes. Yeah. Right, I'll take the next question because it's about non-EU nationalities and I'm from Belarus, so coming from outside EU. Um, can non-EU nationals work in the Netherlands after completing their master's? Okay, so after completing a bachelor or master degree, you can take a one-year um, special visa where you can search for the job. So basically, you have this year where you can stay in the Netherlands, uh, apply for different jobs, and eventually when, not if, but when, you get the job, uh, you need to have a specific contract. So it's like a stable contract where their your uh, employer will kind of like be a grantor and will get you a working visa. It is a bit like more complicated to be non-EU, but this challenge make you more motivated, what I can say from my side, because you know that to stay here you need to put a little bit more effort and the process is pretty clear, so all you need to do is just to really look for a job. So a job which is something that can help you stay because you always need a visa, some kind of a permit to stay. So yes, it's possible, just takes a little bit of effort. Mm -hmm. I can take the oh, other Iris question. Can, yeah. Iris can take this one. It's IB Asia. IB Asia, yeah. right? Oh, All right. Go for it. Read it out. Okay. Uh, is it a, if I want to study? Yeah. yeah. Okay. If I want to study international business for Asia, and um, yeah. So basically, the question is that uh, if uh, oh, if the, someone wants to study okay. a particular program, can they combine the for arts or some other things? Electives. Yeah. 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 So, Electives or or yeah, uh, you can continue if you want. <laughs> so every every block, uh, you're gonna have your normal classes, uh, specific for your uh, study program. But then you also have the electives, and uh, you can do whatever you uh, like in your elective. Uh, right now, for example, I'm doing an elective about uh, Great Britain. Uh, you can take. Um, classes as uh, Korean or uh, Vietnamese language, Vietnamese culture. Um, I think they also have something about filmmaking and I did it. I, I did. also did that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you can do, uh, it doesn't matter if you're uh, uh, studying in IB Asia, you can do filmmaking, for example. So uh, you have loads of options. Yeah, or, or some people, they are really keen uh, in hotels or maybe fashion or arts. And I know so many people who are studying business, international business and management, and uh, oftentimes I ask them, so why did you choose to study international business and management rather than studying hotel management, right? And they said that it's, it's broader, you can have a better career finishing, uh, uh, finishing uh, these kind of studies and obtaining bachelors of uh, business administration. And uh, what they are doing is that basically they are taking electives which is uh, uh, yeah related with arts or fashion or hotels. They are doing projects for for actual hotels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, just just to specializing in this this kind of field. Yeah. So you can also do this. Mm -hmm. 
Next question from Oliver, I'm guessing is from the UK. Will there be any effect on UK students applying depending on the result of Brexit? We can't uh, say that for sure at the moment. We just asked uh, our UK uh, recruitment officer. Um, there is there is likely to be a change because of Brexit, but there are no confirmed, um, let's say, inf there's no confirmed information about what changes that will bring at the moment. So um, I'm sure knowing that your application is coming in and you hold a UK passport, um, I think they will be in touch with you as to what those changes will be. Um, but there's nothing that we can say at the moment. Yeah, I think that's it for that one. Um, who's the, what's that name, Mir Mirana? I can't read the name from here. Miruna. 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 Um, I think Hello. she's very Romanian. I have a question. How can you apply for student fees in Holland? And also, what are the requirements in order to qualify for this? Yes. That's one good thing about, well, if you're an EU student, unfortunately, Senya. Um, <laughs> if you're an EU student, there are quite huge advantages compared to the UK here. Um, you can apply for what we call the tuition fee loans. And that's any EU is able to have this. Um, what it is, is you basically, essentially, your tuition fee split into 12 months. So you receive that every month. Um, I think for us last year is about 167 100s, euros yeah. per month. You do have to pay it back within 35 years, but that's two years after you finish um, your studies. Um, that's the first option you have. There are more uh, available options as well if you work. So if you're like, I think, do you, I think you also have it. You 56, yeah. 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 If you work 56 hour uh, contract in the Netherlands. You are also entitled to what we call the free student travel product, which means that during the weekdays you can travel for free anywhere. And you can really bet that we take advantage of that. I mean, I spend half my week going to Amsterdam for free instead of paying 40 euros. Um, so that's a huge advantage for students as well. And you get two extra um, advantages. One is the additional loan, which I think is up to about 800 something euros yeah. um, that you can add on to your loan. So altogether it would be about a thousand something. Um, and then you also can have um, the supplementary grant based on your parents' income. So if your parents make below a certain income, you can also be eligible to have about 390 euros per month, which is a gift. So that's the only one that you don't have to pay back. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why uh, many students are coming here to study in the Netherlands, because the government, they provide uh, a lot of uh, uh, financial support. I mean, students can get up to 1,060 euros. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. So I know so many people, uh, they are living like on, them, uh, on themselves. They don't need yeah. anything from their parents. They save some money. They travel. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And of course, to... yeah. We do that. Yeah, we always do that. <laughs> or, or, yeah, uh, also traveling around the country. So uh, this is amazing. And I know many people who are using these kind of benefits. Yes, uh, what about yoga, cricket, and rugby? I'm sure uh, there is yoga class. Um, yoga. Yes, I we know that yes. one. <laughs> cricket and rugby, I'm not sure about, actually. What, the, what I would suggest to you is to go to Erasmus Sports Center. Yeah. yeah, the website. And over there, there is going to be like a huge list of the activities. Over there, you're, you're going to find, I'm sure, everything. Mm-hmm. I'm a Dutch national, but I grew up in London. Would I still be treated as an international student? Yes, you are. So basically, that's the situation that I was in. Um, being a French passport holder, I kind of assumed that I wouldn't really be eligible for um, housing. At least I wouldn't have priority. Um, but the second, is, it works on a priority level, the housing. So first priority, of course, goes to people that are outside the EU in terms of uh, housing. And that's based on your current living situation, not only your passport. So for myself, I am from France, but I came from Thailand, which meant I had number one priority for the dorms. Um, so I applied for it straight away. And second priority goes to EU students. So I think there's like a week or a couple days difference where they let all the non-EU sign up first and then the EU and then the Dutch. Um, I think the Dutch never actually end up getting a room because it's a very busy, um, let's say it's a very, there's a lot of applications. Um, but it does mean that you will be regarded as an international student in terms of housing. Yeah, but in terms of other things, if you're not sure, you can also, of course, mail our co-admissions because we know many people having different passports, living in another place, so it depends on the situation. So if you're not sure if you're an international student or not, you can just uh, mail co-admissions. I see a uh, question about budgeting. 
uh, how much money do we need to leave in Rotterdam? Uh, well, as a first year student, I can tell you uh, I was paying 417 for my dorm room and I had about 300 euros from my parents to uh, spend, uh, which like in my first year, it was uh, quite good. I had I could go out. I also went um, traveling a few times. Uh, obviously, if you want to work in your second year and provide a little bit for yourself, as I do now, and also Victoria and, and Juice, and I think everybody, uh, <laughs> taking uh, responsibility. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can have a, a bigger budget. You can spend a little bit more. But I can tell you, in my first year with 700 euros, I I had a like a yeah normal student life. Yeah. The advice always given is about a thousand, so 500 yeah. for your rent, 500 for your allowance. That's what we usually is the ballpark we give for students. Of course, very much depends where you like to do things like your grocery shopping, how often you're going to party. All of that comes into play, but that's pretty much, um, let's say, the ballpark. Um, I can take up uh, Victoria's question. Yeah. Can you please advise us about what kind of expect expectations and mentality we should enter with? Um, from my uh, perspective, try to, you know, it's an international place. It is a Dutch country, but it is a very multinational area, especially Rotterdam. So just come open-minded and, and be willing to, to meet new people. I mean, this is what the study is all about as well, international business. So it's not about the load of work you're going to get in, in the study itself, but it's, it's the way you approach it. And of course, it's not just studying. So, and part of business is networking, is meeting people. So there's always that part of you know your life here in Rotterdam that you have to consider but yeah there's no specific expectations no specific uh, specific mentality mm -hmm. but yeah but, but the, you should be open should minded I think yeah. is also an important one I mean don't just stick with your nationality really get yeah, to know I mean you have just you know an exceptional opportunity to be in a very international city um, it is the business hub as well of the Netherlands um, we have the biggest port here so there are always opportunities to Network as well is a huge important thing, especially as a business student. Um, the second you build your network right from first year, your opportunities for things like internships and future careers really just goes up. Yeah, about internships, I see a question if internships are available for non-EU. Yes, for an internship, it doesn't matter your nationality. The only thing that matters is that you are enrolled at the university. That's the criteria. And with another question about the internship, what is the best option? Well, it depends on you. I know people doing various things in marketing, logistics, finance, in startups or in big companies here in Netherlands or in the US. So I would say what you feel like doing, what you feel will contribute to your future, what you feel like will make you happy and passionate about the job. So the choice is huge, just up to you to find there. But you, you don't have to think about it now. But in the future, it's really something that is great about this program. So after two years of studying, you will encounter that. Yeah, it will contribute to your CV and your future for sure. There's the next question is very important. Is that Lina? No, the one above. Where is the campus? Oh, that's a very oh. important question, actually. Um, and that's something we didn't cover. Uh, we are currently at the Krellings Zone campus. Uh, it is the main campus of, let's say, the Rotterdam Business School. But the bachelor studies and um, are currently uh, studying at Posta Milan. So it's about 15 to 20 minutes from here. Um, and it consists of all the English taught bachelors. We're all in that building um, at the moment. Um, and that's where you are going to come uh, should you start your studies here. With masters at the moment, they are at Kralings Azom. Um, some of you may have uh, heard that you may be moving as well to the Posta Milan campus. There, there is no certainty at the moment, but the second that there is, um, all students will be made aware of this. Um, mm -hmm. And there's one question underneath that I see from Christina. Um, can you talk about housing and accommodation, please, like when I should apply for the campus and tricks? Um, basically, with housing, the university offers three different housing, uh, let's say, accommodations. They're all located from about five to ten minutes from here, and one is actually on the Krellings is on campus. Um, the three, I think, actually the four of us have previously lived in Robert Valdestrasse. Yeah. Senya was there a year before us, and then we were uh, there the same year. And basically, it ranges from about, I want to say, 400 to 600 euros, depending yeah. on which building you're yeah. in. So we were paying more than 400, 500 range in Robert Valdestrasse. Um, you will see the housing through a website called ssh.nl. 
Um, you might want to type yeah. it, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be a website for the housing, and housing starts to open between the first two weeks of May. Um, so by then you will receive an email if your application is completed by our housing officer um, to let you know that housing has uh, opened. When that does happen, you have to register for your housing, and upon, let's say, um, acceptance through our housing officer, you can start to look for which apartment you want. In order to secure an apartment, you will have to make the payment. It's usually first and last month's rent, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, and from then on, the second you make the payment, you basically have secured your housing. Yeah, there um, will be more information during the webinar, because yes. I understand that's a lot of information. Everyone wants to get a housing. That's, um, I think, the biggest concern of most of the people. But we will have a webinar about it. You can also uh, yeah, just ask us for our housing officers or like don't don't uh, worry, we provide help and you also get tips. But we'll have a separate webinar. Yeah, but about probably that. everybody would agree that uh, Robert Baldestrat, I yeah, mean living in dormitory was the best year. Yeah, yeah. Oh how important yeah. it is to just yeah. go and live in a dorms because yeah. there is no there's let's say there's, there's no uh, Dutch students there. So uh, it's just international students. Everybody gets used in. Everybody misses home. Uh, you're in an international environment. So uh, me and Victoria met first day of our stay in Robert Balde, and now we're living together in a separate uh, apartment in the city. So it gets you friends, and uh, it's just it's a, it's a different type of vibe in the dorms. Yeah, we would highly recommend yeah. And guys. Uh, yeah, keep up with the dates, because uh, as uh, Victoria mentioned, uh, there is going to be like separate dates for the openings, for the accommodation, and uh, trust us, it is going to, yeah, it is going to get out of uh, of the rooms quickly. Yeah, yeah quickly. but be be aware that we have a limited amount of spaces, mm -hmm. so it's not like everyone gonna get it. If you are very fast and if you have a priority like a non EU, you have more chances of getting it. There is still like a chance to get, of course, a room or apartment on your own to rent it. We provide help with that. So yeah, go for dormitory if you can, if you are able to, if you have your own time. But there, are, of course, we all now live in other apartments, so it's it's okay to live in there in there like a room, just rent a room. But the yeah, dormitory is the best. Mm -hmm. So we've got a few minutes left, so we're going to answer just any question that hasn't been answered. So a subject. So, um, yeah, but program. in terms of the IB Asia, so Victoria, you're asking about us to talk about the IB Asia program. What I can suggest to you is to look out for the upcoming webinar on IB Asia, and that's going to be given by a student and lecture, all focusing on IB Asia. Um, if you do have specific questions you want answered now, you can send an email to the Koya Student Ambassadors, um, and I can answer your questions for you. Um, we're going to answer the last few ones. Uh, how many hours can non-EU students work per week? 16, 16 hours. Mm -hmm. um, when do the courses usually start in September? The first Monday of September usually is when it starts, and we do have the intro week that starts a week before that. Yeah. Can you study Korean? Yes, as an, can, elective. as an elective. Um, is finding a room hard or easy? One uh, advice I give you if you're looking in private accommodation is do not sign your contract if it's not a Dutch bank account. Scamming is quite an issue here uh, in Rotterdam. We do have students who show up saying they've uh, paid a thousand euros and they have no housing. Um, so one advice for me is uh, just use. Uh, we can give you uh, different websites that you can use. If you send an email, if you are having troubles finding apartments, uh, you can send us an email and we can definitely provide you with some websites to use. And I like this from Ati. Generally speaking, is it easy to find a professor out of class time? Normally, yes, because they do provide their uh, classroom and uh, where they will be in, like, outside of class hours. And they also provide their email, so you can definitely uh, contact them. Mm -hmm. And normally, they do respond to to the email. So you have you have a really good uh, teacher yeah. student relationship. I mean, you can always go to their office. Yeah. Just pop in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the price of textbooks per year? Well, usually we say it's about 300 per year, but for most students, it's about 20 euros. And I say that purely because a lot of the time you will just get the PDF uh, from the the upper years. I think I've yeah, most yeah. of my textbooks are all PDFs. I didn't have to buy it. Yeah, and then <laughs> if you really want it on paper for about 17 euros, you go to the print shop and they bind it for you. Um, so I think in terms of textbooks, I wouldn't worry about that. One thing to do, which we've advised in previous slides, is get to know the student ambassadors because we are all from IBM and IBA and if you'd like our textbooks we are happy to sell them to you. Um, so just a little trick there. 
sorry, just to make sure if I go for IB Asia, as you said, I can study Korean. Is that so? You can basically, you won't study it as a language in your program. So just quickly, you have to choose either Chinese, Japanese, or Bahasa Indonesian. Those are the three programs that are offered within the study. Now, if you want to study Korean, and when we say an elective, it's about seven to eight weeks. So after those eight weeks, you can you basically no longer study Korean. If you're really, really into studying Korean, what you can also do is just study it at a language school outside of the university. There are several in the city. But, yeah, time's up. All right, guys. so time's up. We'd like to say thank you so much uh, for joining us from all of us. And we really hope uh, to welcome you to the university in September. Yeah. And this was also really fun for us to do. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thanks I for joining. You all. Yeah, make sure to follow us and yeah. uh, keep an eye on your newsletters because uh, there's going to be more content, more webinars, more interaction with you guys. All right? Okay. All right. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.